I'm going to speak about why we eat the way we eat. And it's no surprise to anyone here that the way we eat is essentially too much of the unhealthy stuff, like the fats and the sugars and salt, and far too little of the healthy stuff, like the fruits and the vegetables and all the rest of them. And we've known that for decades, the way we eat causes more disease and death than almost anything else in our society, right up there with tobacco. So knowing this, why do we still eat the way that we eat? So allow me to step back for a moment to try to explain that. Steve Jobs is lucky to be alive today because he received an organ transplant two years ago. He was lucky, but most people aren't. There's far too few organs to go around, and thousands of Americans die every year because they can't get the organ that would keep them alive. Now, I don't think I have, actually have to tell you about the importance of organ donation because you probably already know it. I say that because most Americans, almost all Americans, support organ donation. And yet, very few of us are actually registered organ donors. By default, none of us are actually organ donors unless we opt in. We're not organ donors, but to opt in, all we need to do is step forward and basically say, hey, this is important to me, I want to be an organ donor. And you sign your name on the dotted line or you check the box when you get your driver's license, and then you're an organ donor. It's that easy, it doesn't take 10 seconds. And yet few people actually opt in and register to be an organ donor. Now we know from other countries, those that are like us where you have to opt in, very few people do. But in countries where it's the opposite, in countries in which everybody is an organ donor, unless you choose to opt out, almost no one opts out. What the heck does this have to do with food? Our environment strongly predisposes to our decisions and our behaviors and ultimately our health outcomes. So the defaults and the context and the settings, the social, the physical environment, these are strong predictors of what we do. So let me show you how this shapes out in terms of our food system. So the first default I'm gonna look at is that the unhealthy foods are far cheaper than the healthy foods. So I'm going to put a bunch of foods in here, first the fats and the oils, and then the sugars and the desserts, and the grains, and the poultry and the meat, and the fruit, and the fish, and the vegetables. And so you can see a really striking uh, pattern here. The unhealthiest foods, and the highest calorie foods, and the empty calorie foods are far cheaper than the healthy foods that we're telling everybody to eat. It's backwards. And this is actually getting worse over time. So adjusted for inflation, the cost of fresh fruits and vegetables have increased by 50% since the 1980s, and the unhealthy stuff is getting cheaper. So the price gap is widening. Another default in our society is that portions of the unhealthiest foods are larger and getting larger, but not the healthy foods. So when you look at Coca-Cola's, in the 1960s, the default size for Coca-Cola's was the six and a half ounce bottle. And if you could find it, the king size was the 12 ounce can. Today, of course, the default is more than three times larger. It's the 20 ounce bottle, and it's getting harder and harder to actually find the 12 ounce can anymore. Now, this is not at all the same for healthy foods, okay? You can't supersize your salad for an extra 19 cents. You can't, you can't get uh, buy one, get one free on apples or oranges. It doesn't work that way in, in our food system. Another default is that the unhealthiest foods are the tastiest foods. Now, this is a hard crowd to convince you of that, but I'm going to try anyway. <laughs> I love fruits and vegetables. I love apples. When I look at that, my mouth waters. But if all else were equal, if the health effects of this and this were equal, I would never choose the apple. I would choose the pizza or the hamburger and fries or the, the warm chocolate chip cookie every single time. The reason for that is that food scientists have become very good at understanding how our brains respond to and react to and crave tastes, smells, and textures. 
and they've become very good at engineering foods and processing foods to take advantage of that, largely by adding lots of salt and sugar and fat to make these foods almost irresistible to our brains. Now, you don't see that with the healthy foods. Mother Nature really isn't able to do that, certainly not to the extent that food scientists are with the unhealthy processed foods. Another default is that the unhealthy foods are far more available, and this is particularly the case in inner cities. You can't walk from here to there without hitting several fast food restaurants and convenience stores and bodegas, which have few, if any, healthy foods available. And yet another default is that the unhealthy foods are much more heavily marketed than the healthy foods in our society. We spend billions and billions and billions pushing the fast foods and the sodas and all these unhealthy junk foods on consumers and virtually nothing promoting the healthy foods. McDonald's alone spends almost a billion dollars every year promoting their foods, which dwarfs the amount of money that we spend on fruits and vegetables. It dwarfs the amount of money that we spend promoting the dietary guidelines. And all these food marketing dollars lead to lots and lots and lots of messages, more than 6,000 every year on TV alone to children alone, specifically to promote the unhealthy foods, compared with virtually nothing to promote the healthy foods. And all these marketing dollars also buys lots and lots of messengers. These messengers shape our preferences and our tastes and ultimately our decisions and our behaviors. Studies show that when Shrek is on a package, kids actually say that the food tastes better. It's the same exact food, and yet having Shrek on the package or Shaq or any of these other messengers makes it taste better to them, believe it or not. This is where we learn how to eat in our society. The dietary guidelines tell us one thing, but everything in our environment tell us the exact opposite. Ultimately, Shrek is the de facto Surgeon General, and all these ads, all these ads and media claims are essentially the de facto dietary guidelines in our society. So in our society, the unhealthiest foods are also the tastiest foods, and they're the cheapest foods. They're the largest portion foods. They're the most available foods. They're the most heavily marketed foods, and largely they're the most fun foods. So is it really any surprise that this is the way that we eat? If I were to create a society from scratch with the express purpose of making people eat the way we eat and creating obesity and chronic disease and diabetes and such, this would be the exact society that I'd create. Think about it. Thanks very much.